teachers. Today I'm going to show you how to convert Google Slides into a Nearpod lesson. First of all, you need to make sure that you have a Nearpod account. It's very simple. Just go to Nearpod and create your account. Once you have that settled, then you're going to go back to your Google Slides and then you're going to go to add-ons. You're going to go to get add-ons. You will see a whole bunch of pictures of things you can add on. If you do not see Nearpod, you can type it in. When you see it, click on it to install. Now, mine is already installed, so I'm going to go ahead and show you what to do after it has been installed. Once it has been installed, you're back at your Google slide. You're going to go and hover to Nearpod and click on Open Nearpod. When it opens, you're going to see a menu on the side coming up. And basically, it's a menu of different activities that you can add on to your Google Slides to make it a more interactive lesson. You can just go through and see which one you would like. Now, my absolute favorite feature is Convert to Draw It. And the reason why is because students can show me their work. And as a math teacher, it is extremely important that I see their work so I can catch their mistakes and misconceptions. So you're going to go to the slide that you want the students to show their work. Here it's talking about multiplication, asking what the array represents here. Now, one thing I will say, please make sure that your text isn't so big, because if it is, students won't have room to show their work. So please make sure to keep that in mind and keep the text small. That gives all the students all this space to show their work. All right, so here's the slide that I want to convert. I'm going to come here and go to Convert Draw. As that happens, you're going to see it start to convert. And underneath it, you're going to see a duplicate of it. However, the duplicate will have the Nearpod um, feature to draw it. OK, it takes a while to load. Don't worry, it will come up with the picture. There it goes. OK, now you'll notice that the other one still exists. And the reason that exists is if you would like, because you have control of the Nearpod, of the slides they see, you can just show it to them and allow them just to discuss without them having to draw yet. OK, and then you can go to the next slide, say, OK, now I want you to draw and I want you to write what is the correct equation. OK, so then you just go to your next slide and you do the same thing. You go to convert to draw it. You would do that process for every single slide that you would desire to use a convert to draw it. If you want to add other activities, you can. You can add an additional slide and put other activities. It is up to your preference. There's a lot that you can do using the Nearpod um, add on. Now you will see I have already done the rest. All of them have already been established. If you desire, you can delete the extras and just go straight to the draw. Again, that is your preference. Now what you do is you go to save and go to Nearpod. And what it's gonna do is gonna take you straight into your Nearpod account. And you will notice that it is starting to save, so you just have to wait. Um, this is several slides, so it's going to take a little bit of a time. The more slides you have, the longer it takes to load. And um, once it is loaded, then you can go to the next step, which is to actually use the live lesson or the student paced lesson. And I'm going to explain to you how that works. OK, all right. So you can see it's a draw and you can see it has live participation versus student pace. Live participation is the one that has been very helpful to me. Um, I use it for my online and my um, campus kids because then we are working together. We have an actual lesson that's interactive that both of my students from online and on campus can do. Now, the student pace would be if you want to assign it more as a, a, an individual activity, if you want it as a homework, if someone's absent and you're near policy, you can provide that to them. All right. And then the preview is just so you can see what it looks like. Now, I want to show you what it looks like if you were to do a live participation, which I highly recommend. So you're going to click on there. And when you click on the live participation, you uh, are going to see a link. OK, and you have these options of what you can do. And what I typically do is I press on the link, I copy it and I paste it in the Zoom chat for my online students. So then all they have to do is click the link and they're automatically into their uh, Nearpod lesson. My on campus kids, I display this code and they just type in the code. So I have my personal device on the side, my other device, and I am going to join this code so you can see what it looks like when students are on. So I'm going to X this out. When they join, you're going to see the names of the students pop up on the bottom right here. OK, now it's just 
one person right now because it's just me with my other device, my name is there. And you will see other students' names also pop up, okay? So if you have 15 total, you'll know they're all in there because all 15 will show up, okay? Um, you also have the option to hide the students' names and right here where it says hide student names. So when you see the students, you won't see. I mean, you'll see it on your student list, but when it comes to showing work, you can you will see it hidden and you'll see what I mean in a bit. All right, so here that all students will see this. On my other device, all I see is this, arrays. There is no next button that I can do. Only the teacher has that capability. So then you go to next. On my screen, I see exactly this. I can't do anything. I can't draw on it or anything, but you can talk about it. And then you can go to your next slide and you'll notice it looks different. That's because this is an activity. Now, when it says awaiting drawing, that means that the student has not gotten started with their drawing, okay? So that is a great way of knowing who's participating, who's being an active participant for online. If your online kid is not showing it and you still see this black, that means they haven't even gotten started. So you can call on them and say, hey, I need you to get started. So on my end, as if I'm a student, I'm gonna go ahead and put what this would represent, try to put like a student. And um, you will see it pop up that I am currently working on it, okay? There it is, see how it says in progress? So I can see the name. So um, your online students won't see this whole menu. So basically if you have 10, 15 students, all of them, was, you will see it all at the same exact time. It's a big board of seeing all the kids work. It's fabulous. Um, and then your on-campus kids will see that big board as well if you have it on your interactive board. If you don't want the students' names to be seen, simple, you just hide student name, okay? Now, one of my favorite features too as well, oh, before I go to that, see how that's in progress? That means the student's still working on it. And if they look like they're done, say, please remember to submit. They have a submit button. And once they submit, you're gonna see it turn to green and it's gonna say submitted. Um, but the, stu the good news is the student still has a, 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 the ability to edit it. So if they feel like, oh no, I didn't want that, they can still edit the answer and submit again. When they submit it, let's say this is a mistake or you wanna show how it's correct. All you have to do is you can put share. And what happens is like on my other screen right now, I can see that student's work. So that means your online students can see your student, other students work, even though they're not in the same classroom, they can share, they can collaborate, they can talk about what the mistake was. It is a fabulous tool. And my students personally love doing this feature because they like to find the mistakes or see what can do to improve. So this is a fabulous way of using Nearpod. All right, so I'm gonna unshare, you unshare, and if you see another student's work that you like, you can do that and, keep, and, and use their work. So you would continue, you would go through all your slides as you needed. I highly recommend doing this Nearpod because it is definitely very interactive. I hope this uh, video has helped you in helping you with hybrid teaching.